हेलो डिफेंस एस्पिरेंट्स वेलकम बैक इन डिफेंसली आप सुन रहे हैं इंडियाज ब्रेव हर्ट्स बुक की ऑडियो बुक तो चलिए शुरू करते हैं चैप्टर वन सर्जिकल स्ट्राइक अक्रॉस द एल ओ सी डाउन वॉज एट टू ब्रेक वेन द स्ट्रिल रिंगिंग ऑफ द फोन ऑक मी अप इट वॉज द जनरल ऑफिसर कमांडिंग जी ओ सी ऑफ बारामूला डिविजन आवर बेस अट उरी हैज बीन अटैक्ट बाई टेरिस्ट एंड आई एम अफर्ड सर दैट द सिचुएशन इज रेदर प्रीकेरियस आई वॉज इंस्टेंटली अवेक आई डिडेंट नीड टू बी टोल्ड हाउ सीरियस दिस वॉज इफ टेरिस्ट अटैक अ मिलिट्री बेस इन पर्सन देन दे वेयर लाइकली ऑन अ सुसाइड मिशन एंड वेन अ मैन कम्स प्रिपेयर टू डाई ही विल काउज ग्रेट डैमेज एंड हैवी कैजुअलिटीज बिफोर ही डज द नेक्स्ट फोन कॉल अ फ्यू मिनट्स लेटर कन्फर्म दिस थर्टी मिनट लेटर वी हैड ऑल द इन्फॉर्मेशन फोर सुसाइड टेररिस्ट हैड ब्लेस्ड देयर वे थ्रो आवर बेस एट उड़ी वेरी क्लोज टू द एल ओ सी एंड काउज हैवी कैजुअलिटीज ड्यूरिंग द फायर फाइट अ कुक हाउस ऑल्सो कट फायर विच इंक्रीज द डेथ टोल इन द फोर डिकेट्स ऑफ माई कैरियर आई हैव फेस्ड अ लोट ऑफ टफ सिचुएशन मोस्टली इनकाउंटर टेरिज बट द स्केल ऑफ वट हैपेंड ऑन दैट संडे एटीन सेप्टेम्बर टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन वॉज हग हुई लोस्ट एटीन सोल्जर्स एटीन यंग लाइव लोस्ट एंड इट हैपेंड ऑन माई वॉच एज आई गोट रेडी टू गो टू द हेलीपेड द कप ऑफ टी दैट आई हैड स्टार्टेड सिपिंग सडनली सिम्ड टेस्ट लेस्ट आई लेफ्ट इट एंड वेंट आउट टू द लॉन जस्ट टू बी विथ माई सेल्फ बिफोर द चोपर अराइव्ड इट वॉज अ ब्राइट क्लियर डे बट फॉर मी इट वॉज अ डार्क संडे द डार्केस्ट इवर The terrorists had chosen their target and timing well. A change of battalion had been in progress. A battalion can stay in a high altitude area for only two winters. Highest above 9,000 feet are considered high altitude, and most of our post on the LOC ranged from 9,000 to 12,000 feet. Soldiers face several medical issues if they stay for prolonged periods at the height. mostly due to lack of oxygen in the air and extreme cold during the snow season so the battalion was in the process of moving out with another one replacing it during this period of transfer soldiers of both battalions spent a couple of weeks together to familiarize the incoming troops with the terrain and peculiarities of the LOC they conduct joint patrolling and lay ambushes together at this time there are double the usual member are double the usual number of soldiers on all ports posts at the uri base too there was a concentration of troops from both battalions with some of them accommodated in tents the uri base therefore proved to be a good target for the society terrorists as they cut off perimeter fence and entered the camp it was still dark but they were detected soon and fired upon even as one terrorist died the others dispersed and it started firing indiscriminately at sleeping soldiers and those stringing to wakefulness it was just before dawn one of the biggest worries in such situation is coordination we had soldiers from two different battalions who had not known each other for long it was also unfortunate that an lpg cylinder exploded inside the cook house the cook house went up in flames which also engulfed a couple of tents the scene at udi was grim the firing had stopped but the fire were still raging the casualties both dead and wounded had been moved to the field hospital sanitization operations to check for more terrorists in the nearby forest were underway an occasional bullet or grenade would exploded because of the heat from the fire meanwhile news come in that the defense minister the late mr manohar parikar was arriving in uri that afternoon why now why today i asked mr g mohan kumar the defense secretary when he rang me up to tell me of the minister's visit so many things were happening that needed my attention the operations in uri planning how to fly out the mortal remains of all those who had laid down their lives the road journey to their hometowns the homage ceremony in srinagar before their bodies were sent back so many calls had to be attended to from the army headquarters 
the police, the civil administration, the chief minister, the governor, the army chief had already arrived. I did not need more VIPs on my hands on a day like this. When the defense minister arrived, I was struck by the simplicity of the man. But I had to say no to his wish to go to Uri. The operation was still in progress and it was not safe for the minister to be there. He respected the decision. So from the airport, we flew by helicopter to Badami Bagh containment in Srinagar, where my headquarters was located. It was impossible to talk in the noisy chopper. The short flight of 10 minutes was the only time I had that day to be alone with my thoughts. It was easy to print phrases like don't despair when there are upsets. Look for opportunities in every failure. But the attack at Uri was beyond such sentiments. What could be the hidden opportunity in an operation like this? They always send terrorists across the LOC and we were sorry, we are always defensive and reactive. Then it struck me that there is outrage in the nation. The country is incensed at Pakistan a sponsored terrorism. My soldiers want revenge and there is a bold leadership at the center. So why not plan for a strong repost? Something that had never been done before. Something that can cause the other side hurt and pain in equal measure. At my headquarters, I finished briefing the defense minister on a map in my operational room. The army chief general Dalbir Singh Suhag and the northern army commander lieutenant general D.S. Huda were also present. Kashmir was my area of responsibility. That is the reason I was doing the talking and briefing. The minister did not interrupt me even once. As I finished giving an account, account of what had happened so far, he asked, So what is the plan now? I said, Sir, if you are asking me about what we can do, then I would like to brief you alone. Yes, yes. I would like to talk to you in your chamber, he said. The official accompanying the minister did not join as the minister. The army chief and the northern army commander walked to my office. The army chief and the northern army commander spoke first. It was their role to work out the larger plan and possibilities at a national level. They talked they talk about our preparedness to take any action and discussed the possibility of our response spilling into something bigger. That would be beyond my level. I was in charge of the operational domain only in Kashmir. Mr. Parikar then turned towards me. What do you have to say? I simply said, Aap haan kah do, mai kar dunga, sir. You give me the go ahead and I will do it, sir. I thought I saw a glint in his eyes and I knew I had his full attention. I told him that the chief would take care of the big picture at the national level. Once he gave the green signal, we would plan and execute a bold response on the ground. Four years, we have been talking a hit when they send in terrorists. And we are unable to react in kind. We will do something which will create that hurt for them too. We will go across the LOC and hit the terrorist camps inside their ter territory. But please leave the choice of targets and timing to us. Four reasons of security. I cannot divulge the details of the operational discussion. What I can reveal is that the defense minister then asked me two quick questions. First, there will be no collateral damage, I hope. I assured him that we should be able to manage that by going through uninhabited areas. In any cause, any case, to maintain an element of surprise, we would need to keep clear of inhabited areas. The second was more of a wishful comment. There should be no casualties to our own soldiers. I promote, promptly replied, I agree, sir. We should have no casualties, but I cannot guarantee anything. This is war. He paused for a moment and my heart sank, thinking how hard a politician would find to agree to such a thing. He said only one word, Barobar. This Marathi word has different meaning in different contexts. Here to me, it sounded like great. Let's do it when I heard this. For the first time on that dark Sunday, I felt a glimmer of satisfaction and relief. The plan was simple and adequate. We would, in an unprecedented move, raid a few terrorist camps across the LOC, cause heavy casualties and hopefully return with all our men unharmed. Then we would announce to the world and to Pakistan what we had done and why we had done it. 
unlike Pakistan, which always denies that it sends to terrorists. After the minister left, it was agreed that I would discuss the option and possibilities with the army commander. A couple of days later, I went to the command headquarters to brief the army commander, Lieutenant General D. S. Huda. It was very nice to meet an old friend, Lieutenant General R. R. Nibholkar, who was commanding 16 Corps to the south. We go back a long way. It requ required a great deal of planning and coordination for any operation to be successful, especially one as hush hush and complex as this, the guidance of the army commander and his staff, as much as the operational coordination with my friend Nimbhodkar, would be crucial to the success of the operation. I am sure the army commander must have kept the army chief informed. That is the strength of the army our hierarchy and chain of command. The CO, commanding officer of the Special Force, SF, battalion was instructed to pick his best teams. That's the way it works in the army. You delegate, the CO know his commando best and would pick the right men for the team. For the next 10 days, we worked like men processed, planning for various options, weighing the pros and cons of each move, calculating the chance of success against the casualties likely to be ensured narrowing it down to the option finally adopted sitting down with the leaders of the teams who would execute the plan and going through every small detail. We also began field training on mock up of the target area. We had chosen terrorist camps that did not have any habitation close by. I recall a prolonged discussion regarding the route in one place to where two options ex existed. I was instituting on the slightly longer route because the shorter option took us a little close to a village. The dogs will bark and it can break the surprise. I said a few others felt that the, the village was too far from our route and I was bringing over casuations at the expense of prolonging our time in the enemy area, which would increase our risk. I recounted to them my experience in an operation who decades earlier, where the mission was both because the dog barking at us from a couple of kilometers distance gave the game away. In a town, the dogs may not bark in the next street, but in the countryside, they will bark from even the next village. As it turned out, the team leader who had executed the, this operation agreed with me on this. On 18 September 2016, when our base at Uri was attacked, the United Nations General Assembly was in session and the terrorist attack drew wide spread condemnations globally. Pakistan was isolated. Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif's speech in the UN General Assembly was scheduled for 21 September. From that point of view, Pakistan's timing of the terrorist attack at Uri was flawed. There was international pressure on Pakistan to stop a supporting terrorism. With an active push from our diplomats, our foreign minister, the late Sushma Swaraj, was scheduled on a speak on 25 September. We decided to let that day passed peacefully. We also ensured that we did not launch any operation on the next two days in order to lull the other side into complacency. Meanwhile, during these 10 days, we continued to show routine movements and operations all along the front. We carried out our recognize in the hour of darkness. Several deception major were used over the next few days, but it would not be prudent to divulge these edge, then we will not be able to use such measures again. Suffice it to say that our efforts paid off, as the enemy did not have the slightest knowledge of our plans, targets, or timing, despite bringing alert about a possible relaxation from us. If they had any suspicions, these were collective and they couldn't point a finger to anything specific. Secrecy is the key to any successful operation. If you catch the enemy unaware, more than half of your battle has been known. This is especially the case in a surgical strike, where you hit the target, achieve your aim and then have to get out alive. In fact, this is why surgical strikes are the toughest operation in the world. Terrorists infiltrate borders to enter our country. They don't have an exit plan. We had to go in, conduct an operation and get out all the lightning speed. We had our job cut out for us. Very few people knew the exact date for the launch of this operation. Everything was strictly on a need-to-know basis. I had expressly forbidden any PowerPoint 
presentation if a diagram had to be drawn and to explain something it was to be made in free hand on the spot and destroyed after use no paper was to be retained by anyone who did not even give a name to the operation without something giving a code name has the opposite effect as people start using the code name and feel secure in their plans on the day we launched our operation a few recognition parties had been sent out in advance they thought that they were going to return at night but when the operations were launched they were merged with the raid party and moved ahead with them once the mission began radio communication was kept to the mission minimum because it is susceptible to intercepted once the mission began radio communication was kept to the minimum because it was susceptible to interception i had issued a strict instructions that radio sets only be used in an emergency at least not till the first shot had been fired within the teams however they could use a smaller walkie talkie sets which have a limited range in any case the commandos who were highly skilled and seasoned did not need to keep coordinating with each other they had perfected this over years of training and working together in different operations however they did communicate in code words after crossing pre decided landmarks known as bounds when our control rooms received a code word it meant that the commandos had crossed that landmark we did not ask them for any more details it was purely one way communication so that we could follow their real time progress several unarmed vehicles uav we are also used to monitor the progress of our troops a uav is a drone means the weapons it a remotely piloted aircraft that can click picture and videos of a target area and stream them in real time we have spent an anxious night i found myself praying more for the safety of our soldiers than for the success of the mission but somehow i had a positive feeling throughout about this operation over the last few days whenever any of my subordinate staff had voiced their concern i had tried to ease their doubts i told everybody don't surround yourself with negativity harness the power of positivity the commando's progress was slow painfully slow because this was not an operation in the hinterland of kashmir they were walking inside enemy territory and faced a hostile atmosphere all around in operation in the hinterland hostile are limited to just a cluster of houses of their hideouts that was not the case here terrorist launch pad are usually one or more houses in a village right on the loc from where they observe the movements of our patrols for a couple of days familiarize themselves with the terrain and then launch an infiltration however the actual terrorist camps are a few kilometers inside here the element of surprise was absolutely crucial to the outcome since our commandos were walking well inside enemy territory they walked like ghosts so that paradoxically they could stay alive to fight the trickiest part was passing through their forward line of defense forward defense group of posts on both sides are protected by mine fields land mines are burned, buried in the ground to deter the attacker on infiltrator they also tend to get dislodged by snowfall and rain it is this that cause maximum damage because their location is unknown on possible infiltration routes trip flares are fixed which light up when touched and illuminate the infiltration for half a minute night vision enabled equipment was also used at the posts to keep a vigil round the clock on likely routes of in infiltration and to make things worse the soldiers manning the posts would let off a round of bullets now and then as deterrence the commandos had to cross all these dangers and hurdles without being detected what helped as was the fact that the pakistan army was not prepared for infiltration because they did not expect us to be carrying out any such maneuvers while the indian side is trained to deal with infiltration and thus deploy ambush parties and use other such major the pakistani side are little more static and focus more on manning the loc posts it gives me great satisfaction to observe that the 
that from 2016 they have also had to deploy soldiers to guard against a possible repeat of our surgical strike the uncertainty mode has been switched on the tension mounted in the early hours of 29 september 2016 we were to start the raids sim- simultaneously after everyone was in position suddenly i was told that firing had started in one of the location i was not was sure if our team had been discovered and the enemy had fired first or one of our teams had started the firing for whatever reason since the first shot had been fired we decided to advance the launch by 15 20 minutes now that the raids had begun the energy in the operation rooms rethed would this turned out to be a calculated risk or a reckless gamble would we achieve success in the mission what if there were heavy casualties there were movements when i found myself extremely confident that all would be well i had taken a leap of faith and i believe fortune favors the brave then the next moment i would find myself on pins and needles thinking of everything that could possibly go wrong this was the first time i realized how difficult it is for someone who has been in operations to sit outside and control it first you miss the action and you want to be there in the middle of it participating and dec- directing second sitting outside far away in an operations room it initially involved in each and every step of the playing planning you feel utterly powerless thank heavens my vacillating moods could could not be seen by the brave soldiers conducting the operations at one of the terrorist camp we got lucky a hug patrol and diesel dump was hit by a handheld rocket launcher and caused heavy casualties the explosion created a hug blast which could even be seen in the uav footage although the blast could not be heard the black could of a smoke that rose in the air obliterated our view of the drone footage it seemed a fitting response to the fire that had engulfed the cook house and tents at uri the strike on terrorist camps across the loc did not last very long ours was a swift operation conducted with precision and while there was the temptation to stay on and cause more damage the team leaders as they had rehearsed broke contact and withdrew rapidly so that they could easily escape back to our side of the loc down was breaking now was the crucial period of the whole operation from the moment the soldiers began to exfiltrate to our side till the point of the last man come back in this is the period when the soldier has neither the element of surprise nor darkness to defend himself our anxiety in the control room reached a fever pitch at this point every time the phone rang i would flinch half expecting news of some casualty at least to me my sigh of relief was very audible every time it turned out to be some other news and thankfully it always was within 30 minutes our men were all back on the indian side of the loc not a single soldiers had been injured during the raid when i reported to the army commander that the operation had been successful and that all our soldiers were back safely i could sense hey relief across the line we could feel this with however we spoke to on the phone after the mission up or down the chain army headquarters had been informed the leadership had been apprised by the army chief lieutenant general ranveer singh director Gen- general military operation dgmo told his counterpart in pakistan over the telephone that the indian army had hit terrorist camps across the loc because of the terror attack at uri where we had lost 18 soldiers he also told him that we had no desire to escalate this any further he was essentially saying that the ball was in pakistan's court if they wished to expand the conflict the ons would be on them by mind morning the dgmo was ready to make a press statement and answer questions the national media had been assembled news had started trickling out and there was 
excitement in the whole country at the astounded success of what come to be known as the surgical strike i spoke with the dgmo and told him to hold off the announcement till he took a full head count of all soldiers returning after the operations everyone in delhi wanted to start the press conference but i insisted that we wait till we could confirm that every single one of our soldiers was back safely this would have delayed them by about an hour but it meant that we could announce that we had inflicted heavy casualties on the terrorists in their camps across the loc for the first time and not injured a single casualty of our own as i said fortune favor of the brave it was around noon if my memory serves me right when the dgmo announced to the world that we had hit terrorist camp across the loc he also announced that we had no desire to escalate the situation and that the pakistan dgmo had also been told this over the telephone the media used the term surgical strike and the name stuck it merits mention here that while there have been shallow operations across the loc in the past from both sides what was different this time was the scale and the depth of the targets and the fact that we owned up to it proactively it was also for the first time that we used diplomacy as leverage for an operation we had for example built public opinion against the terrorist strike at uri by using the un general assembly as a forum soon after the press conference the team's leaders when flown in by helicopter to my headquarters for a quick debrief i could see that they were exhausted but their faces were glowing their body language was jubilant when they saluted me and said jai hind sir i was filled with emotion i returned their salute crisply and said thank you boys thank god you have all come back safe and sound history will remember you for what you have achieved today and then before they could start discussing the operation the boy who used the bring a tea entered with a tray as instructed by me instead of tea the tray held a few bottles of johnny walker black label normally this would be the time for beer but today is not a normal day it's not a day for beer these tigers need something stronger that drew a lot of laughter everyone was in high spirits i then turned towards brigadier rana kalita brigadier general asta bgs and said these sf guys are in the habit of eating whiskey glasses so i am not going to risk it with that i opened a bottle of black label myself and poured a decent slug into their mouths one by one you know all about having a sort of whiskey well these guys were getting shot by whiskey then once of them took the bottle and said permission to give a shot to the cross core commander sir i opened my mouth and he poured in a grenius major i thought i would get a kick and feel high after drinking a straight from the bottle but i was already on a high and so i suspect where all of them i also realized that they must be really tired and the adrenaline rush couldn't carry them forever so we rushed through a quick debrief and did a more detailed one the next day I received a phone call at around 3:30 p.m. Sir, the defense minister wants to talk to you. His private secretary come on the line first and congratulated me. When the defense minister come on the line, he said only one word: congratulations. It was a little disconnecting as he didn't say anything more. I replied: "Jai Hind, sir. Congratulations to you too. Sir, this is your victory as much as of the soldiers who went across." thank you for giving us the go ahead to conduct this operation he replied yes i am glad that all our soldiers are safe thank you again it was a, a step and down operation something that had never been done before we had struck at terrorist camp across the loc and eliminated a large number of terrorists this surgical strike in effect set the stage for the balakot air strike when the terrorist attack happened at pulwama a year and a half later we had drawn new red lines at India had said the soft state attack i had never imagined that i would get an opportunity to be capping nearly four decades of my service with a glorious operation like this one cannot overcome the grief of the loss of 18 soldiers in uri but the surgical strike gave us a sense of class i salute the memory of the departed and i salute the bravery of the brave hearts who executed the surgical strike the end of the chapter 1
surgical strike across the LOC. Most important lines from the chapter 1. Secrecy is the key to any successful operation. If you catch the enemy unaware, half your battle has been on. Thank you.